on this episode of Should I Learn the Hard Way, helping people excel at their job. On the last episode, I introduced everyone to my model for a people-centric organizational culture. And the whole concept stems from this base idea that people don't want to hate their jobs. And if we take that and sort of flip that around and make it positive, what we're really trying to do is find those things that help people like their job. And, and, and I believe that it is the corporate culture or the organizational culture that sort of shapes that feeling uh, in people that, that helps them to like their job. But just saying, hey, I wanna help you like your job is a little too nebulous. So what we needed to do was break that down into things that are a little bit more actionable. And so the first area that I thought we could break this down into and talk about, and that's the subject of this episode, is to help people excel at their jobs. And so the idea behind this is that good organizations with strong organizational cultures that help people excel at their jobs end up with happy employees. That's part of it. But that's only one part of it because the second area we really wanted to focus on are the things that an organization does to help people love and trust the organization. That's number two. We're gonna cover that in the next episode. And then finally, the third piece is this. It's the things that, that organizations do to help people value and respect their coworkers. And that's gonna be the subject of the third episode in this series. But going back again to start at this episode, what we really wanna focus on is how an organization helps people excel at their jobs. And, and what I've created are sort of five key ways that I believe that people or organizations rather help people excel at their jobs. And the first one is really interesting and it's, it's kind of simple, but it's kind of critical. And it's about helping people understand the value they bring to an organization. And I think of this as sort of like, you need to have a well-described purpose. And, and, and I think everyone needs to feel that. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we're talking about a well-described purpose, what we're doing is we're saying, an, a person needs to know, an employee needs to know what it is that they're doing and how it directly impacts the organization. Not just, hey, you're gonna come in and do a bunch of tasks every day, but it's like, what are those tasks ultimately accruing to? What are they driving? And how is it helping the overall organization sort of meet its goals? And that's actually really important because people who feel that the things that they're doing have no impact, the people who feel like the things that they're doing aren't relevant to the company in large, they don't feel satisfied with their job. So part one of this is to start by thinking about those sorts of things. So what can we do? Well, first, I think you need to define that person's role in such a way that there's clear metrics, KPIs, that they can target that accrue to something the organization cares about so that they can explain how they help drive those metrics and how those things help to drive something that the organization cared about. It, it, it's that sort of proof is in the pudding thing. It's like, if I do this and I can see results and I can see these results, I know these results are doing something important to the organization and therefore I feel as if my role has purpose in the organization. Second, you want well-defined duties and responsibilities. This is kind of interesting because a lot of times you'll see people who get hired into a job only to find out that the job has nothing to do with what they were hired for. And that's a very quick way to have a dissatisfied employee. It's also a very quick way to make an employee um, not successful at what they're doing. Because if they don't have clarity around their roles and responsibilities, it's hard for them to perform their roles and responsibilities. If they're vague, if they're nebulous, if they're misdescribed, then you end up in this interesting sort of internal competition where people think you're supposed to be doing one thing because that's what's in the job description. You think you're supposed to be doing another thing because that's what you're being told to do on a daily basis. And you sort of end up with this little dissonance between what the role expectations are versus what the role actually requires you to do. So having that clarity is absolutely critical to the process. Third, well-aligned incentives. So what we're talking about here is pretty straightforward. What's the incentive to do the right thing? What's the incentive to not do the wrong thing? And how clear are these incentives to the, the employee? And this is important because they're both 
critical to employee satisfaction. Um, if I look around and every time someone does something wrong or does something horrible, there's absolutely no detriment for doing that, that creates sort of a weird environment in the organization where failure or lack of performance doesn't really get addressed. On the other hand, if I'm doing everything right constantly and there's literally no incentive to do so, I also start to feel this weird dissatisfaction. I start to feel unappreciated. I start to feel that maybe the organization doesn't know who I am, appreciate what I do, and value me as an employee. And if we're thinking about the things that make an employee excel at their job, having good incentives that make them feel good about doing the things that are critical to the organization, important to their job, are really, really important. Fourth, continually improved knowledge and training. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting personally is as I've traveled around the world and spoken with a lot of executives, I used to run a, a game. Uh, it's one of these coin games where you give everyone fake money and you ask them to invest in the thing that they see as most important to invest in in the organization. And, and for a long time, uh, th the automatic answer was security. Up until I think GDPR went into effect, a lot of people felt that security was the thing that their organization was under invested in. Almost the day after GDPR went live, that switched in mass to training. In fact, I had statistics and data that showed that globally, the number one concern we were seeing from CIOs and executives in general was the lack of training. There's a little bit of a logic to it, which is a lot of times when you're looking at ways to shave money out of a budget, uh, one of the things that people often shave out of that budget is training because it seems in a weird way like it's superfluous. Yet at the same time, people very quickly realize that that lack of training is actually harming their employees and it hurts their employees' abilities to excel at their job. And so really it's about providing that sort of training, but it's not just job training. I think the biggest thing that gets overlooked in most organizations are sort of the professional skill training. You know, teaching people to communicate, uh, teaching people to collaborate, teaching people how to talk with each other, how to deal with conflict effectively, uh, how to deal with customers effectively. It's that soft skill set that's absent so much in so many organizations today that actually have a, a direct detrimental impact on employees. Now, I said something kind of important about this, which is it's got to be continually improving and continually updated. And that's, that's for this reason. Uh, I think every single one of us that's been involved in corporate uh, life for any period of time has watched the horrible training video that was produced 15 years ago that has been repeddled and repeddled by these training organizations over and over again. You, you find that the scenarios aren't relevant, the people aren't relevant, the topics aren't relevant. And, and in that case, what's happening is employees that are going through this training are feeling very much like, I'm, I'm just doing this to check a box. I'm just doing this because the organization has to do it. Maybe it's compliance training, maybe it's ethics training, it's some sort of mandatory training I have to do, and it's just about checking a box. It's not about the organization investing in the employee, to help the employee excel at their job. And so really it's, it's about not just investing in training, not just, not just delivering training to employees, but it's that continual update. It's making sure that it's relevant to the times, relevant to the employee, and relevant not just in helping them perform their, their base job duties well, but also helping them to develop the professional skills or the human skills that they need to navigate the organization better, to get along with the coworkers better, to get along with customers better, and to be more effective as human beings. Those sorts of things help employees feel like an organization cares about them. It cares that they develop these skills. It cares that these skills are available to them so that they can excel not just as employees, but as humans as well. Last, continually improved tools. This is an interesting one because this is where I think we see technology and innovation come into play. So, so often what you see are, are organizations sort of stuck in this pattern of doing things the way they've always done them. In fact, a lot of times these sort of behaviors, these ways of doing things are codified in tools 
and in applications that people use every day. And so it becomes very, very difficult to rethink the way you're doing stuff and to become more innovative in the way that you do things if everything is sort of stuck in a certain way. Um, when I talk with CIOs, this comes up quite a bit. In fact, the number one thing I hear them say when they talk about why the organization is not modernizing or innovating or updating is they say, well, our culture prevents that. But when you dig into that and you really look at what that means, it's not culture as in like the bigger, broader culture. It's really that so much of how the organization performs and executes are codified in processes and tools that haven't been touched in 10 to 15 years. And so part of one of the things I think organizations have to do if they really want employees to excel at their job is they need to be in this mode of continually improving their processes and their tools. And those are hand in hand, right? Because it's, it's the mechanization or automation of processes that's so much core to what we do nowadays. And by the way, that's where a lot of the innovation comes in businesses today. So taking a step back, being an organization that makes that a priority and makes that important is really, really critical to, again, helping employees excel at their jobs. So to recap, the first element of creating a people-centric organizational culture is to help people excel at their jobs. And we introduced five core ideas under this area that are important for organizations to invest in to drive cultural change. The first one is to ensure that everyone has a well-described purpose. The second, make sure they have well-defined duties and responsibilities. The third, make sure they have well-aligned incentives. The fourth, make sure they have continually updated knowledge and training. And the fifth, make sure they have continually improved tools and processes. Thanks for tuning in for this episode. Again, feedback is always important. Feel free to leave comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, you're always welcome to send me email. That's at silthw at hey.com. Again, that's silthw at hey.com. I love your feedback. So here's what I'm gonna ask you. What do you think are the things that employees need to excel at their job? Feel free to re leave me a comment, respond, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Next week, we're going to cover the next area, which is helping people love and trust the organization. Until then, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.